We have absolutely murdered our fields and our agriculture. We're sleepwalking into a huge agricultural issue with the soil quality around the world. Our global population is expected to reach 10 billion people by 2050. We need to figure out how to supply enough food in a way that's sustainable for the planet. The answer may lie in vertical farming, stacking crops indoors and growing them with LED lights rather than planting them across fields. Vertical farming doesn't require us to take more land like rainforests or wetlands and convert them into farmland. But this isn't just to conserve land. It requires less water and creates less pollution. Farming's actually one of the biggest CO2 producers. There's a problem though. Vertical farms are expensive, currently three to five times pricier than traditional farms. The question is, can they ever be cheaper than farming the old-fashioned way? We work on, can we grow something that's a price for all to eat? And then if we crack that, we roll the technology around the world. This is Make It Count, a series on environmental innovations and the math it takes to bring them to the masses. This is James Lloyd-Jones, the CEO and founder of Jones Food Company. You can sort of see the size of the sites. He runs the largest vertical farm in Europe. He has 26 tennis courts of growing space, 7.5 miles of LED lights, and grows fresh produce 365 days a year. It was an overnight success story in 14 years of uh, lessons learned up to this point. When you take a farm indoors, you're giving up free access to one of your biggest inputs, light. Sunlight fuels traditional farming, and while its availability is seasonal, it's totally free. That's hard to beat. For vertical farming, lighting can account for up to 30% the operational cost. The first thing that's got more people involved is the price of LEDs, because LEDs were hugely expensive, so people didn't want to build big farms because of a high capex cost. But as LED prices and efficiency continue to improve, vertical farming is getting more appealing from a cost perspective. Vertical farms also compete with free sunshine by using light recipes, unique combinations of spectrum intensity and duration. It doesn't mimic sunlight because sunlight has a lot of light that they don't actually need. They're optimized specifically for our basil. It just happens to be pink. <laughs> Plants benefit disproportionately from different wavelengths of light. Vertical farms use their electricity to generate only the specific wavelengths that are best for the plants. Saving space and water, Automating repetitive tasks and reducing the supply chain also help cut the cost of operation. We're cutting down the supply chain from lots of people handling crop over many countries, many borders to get to your plate. New technologies also play an important role, not only in sustainability, but in developing an overall system that can compete with traditional farming. Currently at Jones Food Company, Solar panels installed on the roof supply around 10% of the site's total electricity requirements annually. It's got solar panels on top that give power to auxiliary systems, and it's being plugged into a large-scale solar site across the road. So the whole site will constantly be powered by the sun with battery backup. That's good for business. With rainwater, capture your rainwater, and you capture your large-scale humidity out of the main grow room, then you save buying water. You know, so it's good for business again. Economics of vertical farming is still a challenge. Everything comes down to price. We're working in a commoditized market. We're trying to get the most yield out of the most space, sell it for the fairest price, and make our technology work and, and pay for itself. But for the economics to work, the technology needs to still come lower than it is now. What will it take for vertical farming to compete on price with traditional farming? Something known as price parity. The, my first site I built is 55,000 square feet of growing space. We're now seeing that we have to scale up with the number of farms. Currently, it costs around 10 million to build a vertical farm. But what happens when you expand the number of farms? With scale, you get economies of scale. So you get your per square meter of growing space cheaper. You're able to get closer to the goal of price parity. But when it comes to competing with imported food, that price parity is right around the corner. We're already selling product into two major retailers, the same price that it would be imported. So we're already there on that. Although vertical farming is getting closer to competing with traditional farming, it may still be hard to adopt due to consumer hesitancy. It's not natural argument. It's quite hard to get over. If it's not grown in soil, they don't recognize it as organic. 
but large-scale greenhouses have been commercially providing peppers, cucumbers and tomatoes hydroponically. Many years. It's very natural and it's better for you. There's a level of education that is going to need to be done to overcome the skepticism of eating plants that are grown in buildings. But when people taste the product, they have a more fulfilling punch of flavor, a higher nutritional value, and a longer shelf life. Cost of land, electricity, water, and robotics all play a big factor in slowing the proliferation of vertical farming. We don't sit and just build the technology and think, hey, we're amazing, this is working. No, that should be reiterated. How can we make it cheaper to build? How can we make it cheaper to operate? How can we make it better 10 times over? These challenges can be overcome with time. And soon enough, we should be able to sustainably grow food at an affordable cost in any environment.